All right, so a day after switching gears here from Texas Tech, now Chris Beard, the next head coach of the Longhorns, after spending five seasons there, you're talking about a guy that led them to 142 wins, switching gears now, going back to his alma mater to lead the Longhorns. Of course, Shaka Smart, no longer the head coach, taking over there with Shaka now at Marquette and looking at the numbers. A uh, stacked up resume there. 2019 national runner up. Three trips to the NCAA tournament. Could have been four if we had a tournament last year, but of course, somebody that's led the Raiders, Red Raiders, to a long standing tournament about now has a chance to do the same thing with Longhorns. And today, the university introducing Chris Beard as their next head coach. Let's listen in. Chairman Eltire, Director of Athletics, Chris Del Conte, and President Hartzell. Appreciate everybody's kind words this morning. Um, I'm humbled, humbled and honored, uh, excited more than anything uh, to be the head basketball coach at the University of Texas. Uh, won't take this lightly, won't let anybody down here. I'm just excited of the journey that lies ahead uh, for all of us. Um, CDC mentioned our, our meeting. Um, Later today, or later here in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you why Texas and how we're going to get to a Monday night game sooner than later. Um, you know, the, the expectations uh, and the, pre and the um, opportunity are off the bat when he showed me a picture of Coach Reese in the 15 national championships. I uh, appreciate Coach Reese being here today. Um, that's exactly the opportunity that I was looking for. Uh, expectations don't scare me. Um, it's why I'm here. And I'm so proud to be back. And I want to thank everybody that made that possible. Um, I also want to thank my family. Uh, fiance Randy is here today. I have three daughters, Avery, Ella, and Margo. Um, it's the only time I get choked up a little bit talking about the family. Um, but Ella's here today. Uh, Avery's in New York. Margo's in Abilene. And uh, they're, they're with me uh, today uh, in Seoul. But I appreciate Ella and Randy being here today. I also want to thank my mom and dad. Uh, same two people that years and years ago dropped me off at the University of Texas. Um, uh, it's an emotional day. I wish my mom and dad could be here, but obviously with the COVID-19, there's challenges for all of us, but I want to recognize my parents today. Also want to recognize uh, a key member of my family, Brett Just, and everything that uh, he did to make this possible. You know, Brett's family. Um, guys, allow me just one second. CDC mentioned my uh, connection and proud experience at Texas Tech, and I want to make sure that I thank Chancellor Mitchell, President Skubanek, Director of Athletics, Kirby Hillcutt, Tony Hernandez, Dusty Womble. Um, I could talk all day about my time at Texas Tech. Uh, it's just simply stated, it was the most difficult decision in my life to leave a place where we had an amazing five-year run from where we started uh, all the way to an overtime game on the final Monday night. To me, those relationships are real, and I'll also always be appreciative and grateful uh, for my time in Lubbock, Texas. Um, Above all, I want to thank all the players at Texas Tech. College basketball is about players, period. Uh, without players, there's no college basketball, there's no coaches. Without students, there's no universities um, like the great University of Texas. So I want to thank all my players at Texas Tech for their buy-in and everything that we accomplished together, as well as our players along the way, uh, certainly at Little Rock and Angelo State, McMurray in South Carolina. Fort Scott, Seminole, all the places along the way. Guys, I appreciate it. Uh, I wish we could all be together today, our basketball family. But again, the COVID-19, a lot of challenges uh, for all of us. Lastly, with Texas Tech, I'm proud to be associated with Coach Knight and Pat Knight. Um, I wouldn't be staying here today with this opportunity if I wouldn't have had really a break, a break in my lifetime having a chance to be with Coach Bob Knight and Pat. Um, you guys know how I feel about you. Thank you, Coach. Let's just get to it, man. Let's start having some fun here. Uh, <laughs> University of Texas. I've gotten a lot of uh, calls in the last couple of days. It's still happening really fast. The thing that kept coming up over and over is, you know, Texas. Man, those expectations, those standards, the urgency of what's going on there, the time, the timeliness. Um, you know, got to get it done quickly. You understand? 
But let me be really clear here. I understand the standards of the University of Texas. I understand where our men's basketball program is going to be and needs to be and deserves to be. Um, those expectations and standards don't scare me. Uh, don't get it twisted. It's the reason that I'm here today is the expectations and the standards of where this program needs to be and will be uh, sooner than later. Um, this program is a Monday night program, and we got some work to do to get there, um, but I'm not afraid to talk about it from day one. That's the game that we're trying to get to, um, and everything that we do uh, beginning last night and uh, today when we get done but this press conference will be about restoring us and getting us to the level where we can compete for national championships. How are we going to get it done? Simply two things we got to do. We got to unite the Texas basketball family. When Texas basketball is united, it is powerful. Um, it is the best. It is a beast. It can't be stopped. Um, we've got to embrace the past players, past coaches. We've got to get everybody back under the same umbrella. Um, all striving for the same things. In that, embracing the past, I want to recognize um, you know, the history of, of Texas basketball. Certainly in my lifetime, uh, beginning with Coach Black. Um, I know Coach Black has supported this program like, like no other. Row 5, I believe, is where he sits. Um, when I was with Coach Penders, we um, enjoyed that. When I was coaching against Texas, I didn't enjoy Coach Black sitting on row 5. Um, but certainly Coach Black, his family, all the players from that generation, you're wanted, you're needed, you know, please come back to Austin. Coach Lemons was a coaching hero of mine, um, a, a fascinating coach known for his wit and humor and the kind of person he was, um, but, but a, a big-time basketball coach. I've studied his teams. Anybody that played for Coach Lemons, Coach Lemons, his family, I know of coaches uh, in heaven watching this today. We want everybody back in Texas. Then certainly it was Coach Wetlick. I have a relationship with Coach Wetlick because of my relationship with Coach Knight. Um, the foundation that he laid here in Texas and all the players. Um, certainly got an amazing phone call last night from, from Mike Wacker. Um, so heard from so many Texas players um, the last couple of uh, days and hours. Anybody uh, in the Coach Wetlick time, we need you back. Then Coach Penders, I'm proud to be Coach Penders. You know, I was a, uh, a, a five-year red shirt point guard uh, for Coach Penders. Um, I was open all the time, but but BJ and uh, Terrence Rincher and those guys wouldn't throw me the ball except for the summertime when we were in the rec center. Um, I'm proud of my start. I cut my teeth in coaching under Vic Trilly and Eddie Orn and, and Coach Penders. Coach P, you know I love you. Can't wait to get you back to Austin. I know you're in Miami today. All my, all my teammates, all the guys that I was here with at Texas, can't wait to get all you guys back together. Um, we're going to get everybody under the same umbrella. The power of this program is undeniable when we do that. I had a personal relationship with Coach Barnes. I uh, respect him so much, competed against him when I was an assistant. Coach Barnes' teams were exactly the way we're going to win at Texas. Grit, toughness, um, just hard work, and obviously talent to talented players. Uh, best players in the NBA is what we need, but we want to keep that edge um, and that chip um, to me of what Texas is. Certainly after Coach um, Barnes, I want to recognize my friend Shaka. I had a chance to talk to Shaka this morning. When I think of Shaka Smart, I think of class. Um, I, I, I have friendship with Shaka and enjoyed competing against him and uh, wish him the best of luck at his uh, new opportunity at Marquette and thank him for the foundation and the positive things that we inherit today. I wanted to recognize Shaka and all the players uh, that played for Shaka. When I talk to those coaches, I'm really talking to the players through the coaches. Again, plan one is to unite Texas basketball family, get everybody back on the same page. When we do this, we all know that this power is second to none. Um, as we unite this, the second thing is, and I've already mentioned it, college basketball is about one thing, it's the players. Uh, players are number one, players are number two, players are number three, and I could keep going. This thing is all about players. And so as we ignite the fan base, the former players, everybody here to make this engine and machine the most powerful in college basketball again, um, it's all about the players as we as we ignite that. Um, you know, I want, I want to mention this right off the bat, too. I need your help. I've never been a guy that's afraid to ask for help. I don't think I have all the answers. Um, I have no pride when it comes to asking for people help, and I think it's very important that this very first conversation that we're having, uh, Longhorn basketball family, we've got to create a home court advantage. We've got to make the Frank Irwin Center this year the toughest place to play in college basketball, and I am going to work tirelessly in my role um, to, to make that happen. 
happen, but I'm going to need your help. We're going to need student attendance to increase and improve. Um, and I look forward to the challenge and the opportunity of that, and I'm very confident that we will be able to get that done. But a home court advantage is so important, and it's worth mentioning today um, as we get started. Speaking of needing help, i um, always been a guy that really enjoys my relationships with other coaches. I appreciate several of the Texas head coaches being here today. Had a chance to spend some time with Coach Sark yesterday. I appreciate him, his wife coming by. Um, those of you that know me know that I'm a huge college football guy. I appreciate it, uh, Coach Sark reaching out. I look forward to being right there hand-in-hand -hand with Texas football. Texas football will have no bigger supporter or fan than me, my family, and our staff. I think there's strength. Uh, when, when, when the sports win at a high level together, and we will do our part in men's basketball, and we will support everyone else on this campus. All right, you heard it there. Chris Beard showing some praise there to Shaka Smart, who's now at Marquette, took over the program back in 2015. Uh, three bursts in the NCAA tournament there. It matches the same number that Beard actually had while at Texas Tech. So he mentioned there the long legacy of the Longhorns. It needs to get back into a position where they're winning championships. He says he wants to play on Mondays. You heard that, meaning the championship game, of course, in this year's tournament that will take place. That is where Chris Beard hopefully will get them back in contention. As you can see there, Longhorns for a long time, they've controlled a lot in college hoops. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.